So, mom's water broke on the 26th of March on a Monday, and she didn't have her baby, the first baby, until the 30th. Why was that? It just took time. She kept going in and out of, of labor. It was a slow, gentle process, um, it, which can be very normal. Sometimes we refer to it as prodromal labor, but I don't know that that's really what she was having. I think that what her body <coughs> experienced was because of what hasn't happened yet. Okay. Um, and we realized that there's a second baby in there, mm -hmm. and what we think is is that it was a separate conception while the first one was still in there. Correct. And what is that kind of twin known as? Oh, you're going to ask me to pronounce that. Okay, <laughs> let me let me grab it here. I mean, the is, other midwife did. <laughs> uh huh. Well, but she didn't know until I looked it up. It is True. super fetation. And so this is when twins are conceived many days or weeks apart from two separate ovulations. So that helped to helps to explain why your mom's birth experience with the first baby was the way that it was. Her body knew that if it was too fast and furious, both babies would come and one was not ready. So we're thinking that the other one might come within another month's time. Yes. So it may yet still be a May baby. It might still be a May baby, but it could still be an April baby. I, I need you right now. <laughs> okay. What else? Is <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is the rarity of this happening? It is extremely rare. I mean, we don't even have percentages. It's that rare. Um, the the last documented case was in 2009. Ooh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a while ago. But also the reason why it's not documented so much is because it's in, normally in the hospital where they force both babies to come out, usually around the same time. Right, right. So with twins, if they will allow for a vaginal birth, they still use Pitocin, which would expel both babies. Um, and then if it's a C-section, we're cutting things open, so that also brings both babies. Uh, yeah. And in a setting in the hospital, one of them would be usually... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Premature. Premature, yeah. yeah. The one that's still inside would be premature and would need to be in the neonatal ICU. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, I mean, there were several things that let us know this was a different type of twin. Um, one was the fact that they weren't discovered as twins until we thought mom was 31 weeks pregnant. Right. Um, although she had felt for a long time that there were twins, <clears throat> she just didn't know if she wanted to have a sonogram. Right. <clears throat> Um, and then your, your, your dad and mom disagreed on conception time. And here we find out they were both right. Because <laughs> dad claims that he knew that mom was pregnant before they went on the cruise. Right. And then it was confirmed after the cruise. Right. Because moms and dads are always right. Right. Moms <laughs> yeah. and dads are always right. You know, so... But then during the birth, um, the birth of twins, the placenta for the babies doesn't come until both babies are out. Right. Um, but the first baby's placenta came 30 minutes after she was born. Which means that there was two placentas in there. Yes, there's two placentas in there, and they were, we already knew they were on either side of the womb. So one was on the left side and one was on the right side. And usually with twins, they're close enough together that they can fuse together and become, they look like they're a single placenta, even though they're two separate placentas. Okay. So in a home setting, a home birth, um, if you had used, if you had forced both babies to come at the same time, what would have, what would have been the outcome? Um, the outcome would have been um, this younger baby um, is of an gestational age to be viable, which would mean, you know, would survive. Um, but we would have had to rush baby to the hospital 
so would still end up in neonatal ICU. Um, the other thing too is that <clears throat> midwives are taught that when there's twins, if the second twin hasn't restarted labor within 30 minutes, you bring the baby. And we didn't feel that that was right in this situation, especially since that placenta came out for the first baby. It gave us um, a reason to pause and really think about and pray about what was happening here. So we also know that your mom's water broke on Monday. And then also on Tuesday, she had a big gush of water, which we had assumed was the sack for the second baby. We now don't think that's true. What do you think it might have been? Um, <clears throat> the membranes can reseal themselves. So I think the first time it was a tear in the first baby's sack that healed. And then the second time it was a true break in the water because baby was going to be born. Um, and then because your mom has had some good sized contractions during breastfeeding, mm -hmm. um, but she hasn't had any amniotic fluid leaking. So that tells us that the other sac for the other baby is still intact. Okay. Cool. Is there anything else that you would like to share about this um, really rare occurrence? Um, <clears throat> Well, I feel very humbled to have been a part of this, and I'm also very grateful for what I know and, and my relationship with the Lord and how much um, I've come to trust Him over my lifetime. So even the times when I felt like, okay, we just need to get this baby out, He stopped me. I mean, and there were, there were several times that I talked to Him about, is this baby okay? And He would tell me, yes, baby's okay. It's just not time yet. It's really cool. <clears throat> and here we have a baby A's out and she's sleeping right now. And she's doing well. We haven't had any issues. Mm -hmm. She's healthy and happy, well, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still learning how to nurse. She's cute. Um, Her color she's not as red as she was when she came out. <laughs> right. That's the other thing. She was she was attached to her placenta for that thirty minutes. Um the, before the placenta came out. And so um, we clamped and cut her cord because we weren't sure whose placenta was coming. Right. But we knew that a placenta was coming because of the color of the blood. Um, but babies in the hospital and even in some home births aren't allowed to be attached to their placenta for that long. So she received a good amount of the blood that belongs to her before that happened, which is why she would turn this fuchsia bright red and then she would be normal. And that's that's really what humans are normally supposed to do right, right after birth. Makes sense. <clears throat> You've learned a lot. I have. <laughs> I have learned a lot. There's a lot to learn still. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, I think I plan on doing a home birth when I get to that point too. Oh, very good. That'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I hear all these stories from my, my aunts about giving birth and I'm like, oh, that sounds, that sounds great. <laughs> right. I think it'll be amazing when I finally get around to that stage. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I don't, I can't think of any other questions. Okay. Other than, uh, what's it normally like to be a midwife? And what made you decide to be a midwife? Oh gosh, um, I became a childbirth educator in 2005, which led me to be a birth doula where I worked primarily with couples who were birthing in the hospital. And um, I've been doing that probably five or six years when I realized that I was complicit in the things that were happening to my clients. Right. Um, it, it, I wasn't in an environment where I could stop the abuses and, and things that were happening. And I decided at that moment, I can't, I can't do this in the hospital anymore. Um, but I also knew that women had the right to have the birth that belonged to them and that baby. And so I just kind of settled into the fact that at least my own clients could have that experience. 
Um, and I have tried to walk away from home birth. And Heavenly Father's made it very clear that this is one of my callings from Him. So I know that every woman that I serve is a woman that He has led to me. And I think you do a very good job at it. We've Thank been you. really happy to have you here for the past couple of like, weeks with the other midwives. It's been nice. Crowded, but nice. Yeah. yeah. You're good company. And we appreciate it a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and of course, we look forward to you coming back in another <laughs> month. <laughs> right. right. Seeing how that baby comes along. Yeah. It's really cool. I've learned a lot <laughs> these past yeah. couple of weeks. And I'm sure my mom and dad have too. So yeah. hopefully that'll help us in the future. Yeah. And hopefully I'll remember it all when it comes time better. You'll just remind me, depending on if you're my yes. midwife. <laughs> I would love to be your midwife. Might be a while. I don't know when I'm going to find a husband. Yeah. Yeah. In your own due time. Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> so that'll be fine. Yeah. But yeah. So you're a good family friend. You've known my dad for a long, long time. Yeah, I've known your parents. We were in the same ward for a while. When you were five. <laughs> a little five. Yeah, it seems like everybody remembers me from when I was five. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> so yeah, it was. It was. Been, it's been an interesting week, and finding out that this is a really rare occurrence. Kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really cool. So yeah. I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>